Good morning, Mount of the World Church. All right. I'm very happy and glad to see all of you. Like always, every Sunday we come together for celebration. I call it celebration because every Sunday, this is the time God gave to us to share the world, actually, publicly with each other. So for me, pers- uh, particularly, is celebration. So today we are going to talk about destiny. You can, you can direct your destiny in many ways, but I want to talk about destiny in God. As a Christian, as an elect person, our destiny is in the world. So when you are elect, God, you have a kind of a Christ-like character because you are elect. The Bible talks about how we're going to be the person that uh, uh, we're going to be because we follow Jesus. So the destiny is a personal question. You can ask yourself, where I am with the Lord? What is my destiny, really? You know, some people might be going to church all the time, but they don't know anything about their relationship with Jesus Christ. So when you have that kind of relationship, then you will be thinking, have a big thought about your faith in the Lord. You got to start to see yourself the way God sees you, not to see yourself the way the world defines you who you are. Because the world doesn't see any potential in you. They don't even think that you can do anything better because they know your, your past. They will judge you according to your past to tell you exactly who you are. But when you have your destiny in God, you know that you are elect. Now, God said that all things has passed away. Behold, all things has become new. So the good news for you is don't try to look back. It's to try to look forward. Because how God have a plan for you and that plan is depend how you receive it. Hallelujah. So we are going to talk about Ruth again. Ruth is a Gentile. He come to the Gentile nation to restore Naomi's blessing. And we see how God has used a root because he cares. He's humble. He cares so much. God's divine provision has done something amazing. Before I get deeper of this, I have news for all of us. Christianity is not about just a thinking that I'm Christian is enough. We all can, everybody can think that way. You can start saying, oh, I'm a Christian, therefore I got to go to heaven. Who knows, sometimes you may not. But Christianity is to live life by faith. When you start living your life by faith according to what God says in your world, then you will see the blessing that will come out of it. We all talk about blessing, but we haven't been tasted the blessing yet until we start walking the pattern of God in our life. Talking is cheap. Everybody can say I'm Christian. But the way you demonstrate your Christianity is the person who walks by faith. You walk by faith and not by sight. You walk by faith because you believe in what God is saying. And because you believe in what God is saying, you follow the step of God in your life. Then you can tell, and you can say to yourself personally, that I know my God. It's not I know God anymore. It becomes I know my God. Because a personal connection is really, really important when you become a Christian. And my encouragement to you this morning 
is to have to that training. That's what the month of the Lord is about. We care. We want you to connect. And we want you to know your Savior. And we want to care for each other. This is what the church is about. Not only just to be in this full war of a month of the Lord, but what we can do to help also our community. So, I'm going to read from Ruth chapter 2 today. From verse 1 to 13. You can read from there, and I'm going to look here. Now there was a, a wealthy and influential man in Bethlehem named Boaz, who was a relative of Naomi's husband, Elimelech. One day Ruth the Moabite said to Naomi, let me go out into the harvest field to pick up the stock of grain left behind by anyone who is kind enough to let me do it. Naomi replied, all right, my daughter, go ahead. So Ruth went out to gather grain behind the harvesters. And as it happened, she found herself walking in the field that belonged to Boaz, the relative of her father-in-law, Elimelech. While she was there, Boaz arrived from Bethlehem and greeted the harvesters. The Lord be with you, he said. The, the Lord bless you, the harvesters replied. Then Boaz asked his four men, who is that young woman over there? Who does she belong to? And the four men replied, she is the young woman from Moab who came back with Naomi. She asked me, this morning, if she could gather grain behind the harvester. She has been here, her, she has been hard at work ever since, except for a few minutes rest in the shelter. Boaz went over and said to Ruth, listen, my daughter, stay right here with us when you gather grain. Don't go to any other fields. He stay right behind the young woman walking in my field. See which part of the field they are harvesting, and then follow them. I have warned the young man not to treat you roughly. And when you are thirsty, help yourself to the water they have drawn from the well. Ruth fell at his feet and thank him warmly. What have I done to deserve such kindness, she asked. I'm only a foreigner. Yes, I know, Boaz replied. But I also know about everything you have done to your mother-in-law since the death of your husband. I have heard how you left your father and mother and your own land to live here among complete strangers. May the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wing you have come to take refuge, reward you fully for what you have done. I hope I continue to bless you, sir, she replied. You have comforted me by speaking so kindly to me, even though I'm not one of your workers. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you that the lesson we are going to talk and to learn from this morning from Ruth. God help us to put all these things in application in our own life. Because after all, you are the God that we serve and everything is possible with you. So we give all the praise and the glory in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. You see this verse is so clear. You can see clearly the kind of person Ruth is. You can see the person we talked about last week, how she's so determined not to back up. Even her sister couldn't follow up. 
And, and her determination is not just saying that I was determined, but we see the character of this, this woman. How she make a time for herself. She doesn't want to be lazy, boom, sitting home. She want to go out to provide for her mother and Lord. Just thinking about the whole things. She doesn't even know where she's going to be. And she said, I'm going to go to do something so we can survive. God has seized everything this girl, I would say this woman, Ruth has done. God has seized her step, her determination, and her heart for the God of Israel. She said to Naomi, your God will be my God. Where you die, I will die, and nothing will separate us. This is the kind of commitment that I think we as a Christian, we should take within ourselves. The commitment of serving Jesus Christ has to be real. And when we are committed to it, it's not just by word only. It has to be shown in our action. Ruth has demonstrated a powerful conviction, personality of her character. She demonstrated her. You, you read the whole thing, you can see her, how she's caring woman. She took initiative to care for Naomi. Ruth has committed herself to Naomi with amazing devotion as she takes the initiative to work and provide for her. Your word has to be taken seriously. Sometimes we say things, but we don't mean what we say. We can say things to just please the people, but we got to be careful when we call ourselves the man and the woman of God that God called us to be. Because the Bible always so clear about the word that come out of our mouths. It could be deadly, it could give life. So when we are speaking, especially when we're standing in the, in the things of God, we believe in the power of God, and we know who we are in the world, our actions have to speak louder than anything else. When your actions start speaking, people can see that. That's why many times we say, you don't have to go to the where you are to hold on this Bible to prove to people that you are Christian, in order for people to believe in you. Taking the Bible with you to go wherever you want to go is okay, it's good. But the most important is where are you in your heart? Do you can love somebody unconditionally, even though they don't look like those kind of person you should love? Can you pray for somebody who hates you, even though your flesh telling you don't pray for it? This is the kind of things I'm talking about. That no matter how you memorize this Bible, if it, those practices cannot be seen through your lifestyle, then you are not really there yet. It's a journey for all of us. Be Christian as a journey. We see also how she is so humble, humility. She asks, this is the, 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 those who walk there said, she asked me this morning if she could gather grain behind the harvester. If with humility, she asks a question. She doesn't say, you know, she does not, she does not demand a handout. She want to walk. She want to do something. Bob said, if you don't walk, don't eat. Another word, don't be lazy. That's the whole thing. You have to produce, especially for Christians. If you understand this, it's so powerful that the whole thing about Christianity is, first of all, give glory to the Lord. But no matter how, what kind of job do you have, if you do it as you are doing unto the Lord, God say you're going to be blessed. Because if anything that you are doing, you are doing like you are doing unto the Lord, you have another way of doing it. Gently, respectfully, and honesty is right there, going to be there, going to be seen. 
But if you are doing it because you know at the end of the week you're going to get your check, well, it's going to work, but now you're going to be challenged. You're going to be challenged because your mind is not going to be filtered in enough to understand because the gossip that's going on around you, the all the I see, I don't see, I say, I don't say, all kind of things, you guys are trying to go through your mind because uh, first of all, your mind was not conditioned in the things of God already, then you're going to be messed up. And you're going to start acting like everybody, even though you call yourself a Christian. Ruth has been hard at work ever since. That means that she took initiative and she humbled herself. And all these things, God always provides and make a way. People of God. Your relationship with God is very, very important. When you have a, a strong, a powerful relationship with an almighty God that you serve, that's the first thing. And he starts dropping things in your spirit. Love, care, do this, help these people, do here, go here, do this, do that. When you start put all together, the presence of God will be there, definitely. The grace of God will follow you for all the steps you are going to take or you already be taken. Because you set yourself apart to be used for the glory of God. Ruth has been demonstrated, not just the word that he, she says, but the action that she put on. Something we have to be thinking about. God is one to work in your life and my life. Both approach Ruth and show her a great kindness. And she, he said, I stay right behind the young woman working in my field. And he said something, I have warned the young man not to treat you roughly. And if you are thirsty, help yourself to the water they have drawn from the well. Boaz, God is using Boaz to provide something for this beautiful woman we call Ruth. He provided food for telling her to walk in his field. He provides protection by telling the young, uh, uh, the young man not to molest her, another word, to protect her, to look at her like her sister, another word. And to provide for her thirst by telling her to drink. She put all together. Things that the need of a human being. We always say about God, how he provides. He make a way when it seems to be nowhere. Our God cares for your life and for my life. The whole point is, do you notice that? Because most of the time, we, we want to make our ways out, not the way of God. We're trying to fight. We're trying to break things down. We're trying to step in somebody's head so that we can receive what we want. And that has been the culture that we are living. That's the way people live life today. If they can do anything to crush somebody so they can get it to the head, they think that success. But in God's word, it's by his grace. If you trust God, if you believe in God, his grace is abound right there for you. The grace of God is there for you, no matter what you're doing. It doesn't matter if you just, you know, clean somebody's office, you do whatever. His grace is going to follow you, and you can fulfill 
the dream. And uh, this is what a, a, a root is saying, what have I done to deserve such kindness? She asked. <laughs> Have you, have you found yourself in the, in the place where you are so blessed? Actually, when we are hate about situation, we are so troubled. We don't know to whom to go. We talk to everybody we can, like a friend. But it doesn't come in our mind to pray first. What we do first is to talk to people. But the point is, when sometimes something hates you and you can trust the Lord with your problem, you'll be surprised how the outcome will be. You'll be surprised how the outcome will be. What have I done to deserve such kindness? She asked. I'm only a foreigner. I just come and follow my mother-in-law. Here I am, I'm being blessed, take over by the blessing. Who am I actually to deserve all kind of blessing? Have you prayed those kind of prayer before in your life? You are so blessed, you've been asking yourself, you look back, what have I done to have all this? It's God's grace. It's God's blessing. And we all can be blessed in that level. If you can trust God with your life, if you can trust God with your life for everything about your life, you say that my life is in the Lord Jesus Christ. God is able to work all these things out of your life. Sometimes we say things like this, and might be thinking, huh, I'm telling you, his word is so powerful. We have to come from, from information to transformation. Information means that we are getting all the information, but when you will not be transformed, that means that something needs to be worked out. And you have to come to the place of transformation. What I have done to deserve such kindness, I'm only a foreigner. You can see that that she is not Israelite. And Israel does not, because she's not Israel, she, not, she, not, she does not even expect all those things that she's, get, she's getting, special treatment that she's getting. And her response to Bo's kindness is astonishing. And when I read this, I know those kind of things come to my mind all the time for a lot of things, for a lot of things. Small church that we are, have two churches that we already planned from small church. Only God who can do this. People who don't know us, they will think that, oh, we are, have a big church here, and things are big, 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 big. But small church with a food pantry who are reaching out to people, almost 300 people, almost 300 people every week. The heart of ministry of love for people in this community giving food to people all the time. The list, I was revising the list because we're gonna have a meeting, is the list was so long, people who are coming to pick up food. That's only God. Why we are doing this? Because God put that in our heart. We are not doing to get something from somewhere. Even though those things come, we will receive it, but that was not the thought. The beginning is caring. Caring for people. Give to people as we have been blessed. Bless others. This is why humility comes when you understand how blessed you are. But people who are proud cannot behave that way. Proud people, God said that they cannot go further. But when you are too proud, then you think about yourself like you know all. Oh, that's where we have problems many times. And I pray that we don't have those kind of uh, spirit in our midst. When Ruth asked why she's being shown grace, both answer her question. Because you have loved Naomi's so much that you were willing to leave a father and mother to serve her in a strange 
land. Caring is so powerful, things. Care for people. Care for people, and when you care, demonstrate it. I can be here telling you a lot of things. I don't think that uh, it's matter a lot. But I know for myself how you can care for people. People that need help, please help those people. Please spend your time with these people. Please make action right there. Because your action will speak louder than whatever you can say with your words. God expects from us to do that. And what the both say finally? May the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wing you have come to take refuge, reward you fully for what you have done. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. When you start doing good things, do you know where I believe in that blessing? Is it will come anyway. Some people that didn't know you because you are doing the good things, they can say, oh, God bless him. Oh, this guy who do this to us, God bless him. Those words that is go out is like a putting money in your pocket, spiritual money in your ministry. When the people who doesn't even know you, they start blessing you because you are doing so great for them, and they don't know what to do, and they start blessing you from their mouth with a good heart, with honesty for what they have been experiencing, for the situation they have been, and here you are, you bring food to them. God bless you. Thank you for caring for me. That blessing cannot be taken away. It's a storage of blessing. Is it something so powerful that uh, God knows that uh, you are storing the people heart just the praise of the Lord, the glory of the Lord is to keep going. That's how much little action can change your life. It can change somebody's life. When the people's lives be changed, God notice about your action. Always notice about your action. Blessing is gonna follow that. Why have I found favor? God will have mercy on anyone who humble himself like roots and take refuge under, under the wing of God. So let us fall, bow before the Lord, confess our unworthiness, take refuge under the wing of God, and be astonished of his grace. I know that we'll hum let's humble ourselves. Because there are things we are not there yet. It's just a moment to say like that. People who say, you know, I'm a sinner. Help me. People who look themselves deeper. They say, you know what? I know where I am. I just need your help. God wants to look for the people like that. Your action made life. I know that we are going to be facing things in life so many times. When you are strong, the Lord, like a root, and you believe what you do, as the blessing comes, sometimes the challenge is going to come also. Apostle Paul, were, were, they were beaten. Paul and his team has been in Philippi when they got into trouble. But Casting demon out of a, a fortune tell, uh, telling slave girl. We all know he ended up in a prison. And uh, the way God did things, when they come out of that prison, he went straight to Thessalonica to continue the preaching. You are doing the right things here, but it caused you, but in the God plan, your gospel keep going. What I want to tell you is when you start doing good things and the discouragement come in your way, don't give up. It's going to come because the devil, actually when those things are happening, is for you to bring gospel somewhere else. The gospel has to be spread everywhere. You know, we, because our flesh cannot contain that kind of behavior or attitude, but God is in the midst of, uh, of, of spreading the gospel. 
So First Thessalonians uh, chapter 2. One part of them said that, yet, our God gave us the courage to declare his good news to you boldly in spite of great persecution. Don't quit. Don't quit, I'm telling you. Don't quit, don't quit, don't quit, don't quit. We who are planting the church, we are going through difficulties. You can count it financially. People are, people are not honest. They say something here, they turn around, they do something else. There's just there's so much things. But we don't quit. We don't quit. We go to the word of God. We pray. We ask God to open the door. We ask God to, to make a way, our crooked path straight so that we can do his work. We never quit. Because we know it's the good things. Every good things you continue to do because the devil is not, the enemy is not happy anyway. Whatever you are doing to save the soul, to make the people know Jesus, enemy won't like it. You have to be prepared for that. Apostle Paul is telling us how the problem they went through. The true ministry doesn't quit easily. Let your word be approved. John 12, 42. This is a, between a Jesus and the Pharisees who came up with uh, the, 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 the people who want to challenge uh, God to, to say, well, what should we do, you know? For the love, the praise of man more than the praise of God. Sometimes people don't want to believe because they, don't, they are not comfortable with the truth. When the truth is there, it's not a lot of people who love the truth. Therefore, they're going to do everything. They want to try to ignore what you are doing. But we can get into that trap. We can get to into that trap so easily. As for men, praise. We have never sought it from you or anyone else. This is Paul in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 6. So our attention has to be in God than in man. And sometimes that's what we need to have really a good foundation in our work with the Lord. I want to, I want to read something to you from C.S. Louis. Naomiya movie, I hope that you have... A, watched that before. This was a witch and a wardrobe. The younger brother, Edmund, is separated from his sibling and ran into the wicked white witch. She wants to destroy the four children. And to do this, she will use Edmund to betray his brother and sister. She tempted him with a threat Call Turkey's Delight. Once Edmund got a taste of a turkey delight, he was willing to do whatever the witch asked him, as long as he got, he got more. That's what we call trick. The devil is capable to do anything for anybody. That's why I always say this. God, the devil can come like in the light to persuade you but if you don't ground or you don't have your foundation in the Lord, you will be taken away easily. But if you know God for yourself, it will be tough. What we are seeing over here is Edmund loved his brothers. You know, he, he loved his sibling. But, but when we get to the place and the things that look so delicious and all these things, now he starts changing mind. Because he wants that better than his assembly. The glory of God is something we have to search for. When you start tasting, David said that taste and know that is good. The goodness of God, it can be there for you if you know the right way to find it. We love you so much that we share with you not only God's word, 
God good news, but our own life too. And the difference and the problem and the difficulties, Apostle Paul saying, because of the love that we have for you, we cannot back down. We want to continue to share the goodness of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. If you don't care about people, then don't get involved in doing ministry. Ministry is about people. I don't know how people, people can be in a ministry and not thinking constantly about how to do something to be part of the problem of a community or to help people. And whether in the church, everywhere. I don't know how they do it. So the question is, how can you do this? How can I get my heart for people back if I have gone, is my heart gone callous? And I was thinking, now, how can you do that? Pray for those people. God said to pray for people. When you start praying for them, you care for them through your prayer. God will start dropping plain in your heart for you to start moving in a great direction. You see, life is, is wonderful, it's great, it's a powerful. There are moments you just celebrate dancing around like a crazy. There are moments you just feel so sad. Oh, things are not working. This is where life is. But don't let the bad moment to, to shock you down. The Bible said that we will fall many times when we rise up again. Because the one that is in us is greater, is powerful than anything, any circumstances that surrender us. We have to get all these things in our mind. Yes, there are moments we'll be discouraged. Yes, there are moments that things will look like it's not working. But you have to know this. They have a Psalm 126, verse 1 to 3. When the Lord brought back his exile to Jerusalem, and it was like a dream, we were filled with laughter, and we sang for joy. And the other nations said, what amazing things the Lord has done for them. You see, over here you can see the, the psalmist was joyful because the Lord has restored them. But, but he prayed for a full restoration. God will restore you. You see you are growing. Things are working. Don't stay there. Keep asking God to move in our life. There are moments we celebrate. Yes, you, you got to know that God said that from glory to glory, that's why he called us. He wants you really, really to be blessed with the blessing of the Lord Jesus Christ. When that blessing is seen in you. This is the power of your preaching, the gospel of Jesus Christ. People will notice that God exists. That God is a God of love because you're going to demonstrate that to other people. Full restoration and a confidence in God's blessing. Those who plant in tear will harvest with a shout of joy. They weep as they go to plant the seed, but they sing as they return with the harvest. They get bad moment and have good moment at the same time. The planting, this is an illustration of a planting and, and, and a harvesting. The planting will be difficult, but persisting will doubtless bring a harvest. The sowing with tear, another word, encouraging people to respond to the Lord and return to the land. The joyful harvesting reap will then refer to other people who return to the land in faith. We have to be trusting the Lord. My wife know me for that. The problem come, I don't jump on it. I, 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 it's not that uh, the, I don't know the problem is there. I know it's there. But I don't, so much to do than to focus on problem. Because when I start focusing too much on the problem, 
my mind said, I did that in the past. I come to the level where the problem doesn't mean problem to me anymore. But why I do, I just pray about problem. I said, I don't understand it, God show me. And then I leave that there. And I do other things because so much my, my plate is full that I use my time properly. The problem is going to be there. When the problem comes, what do you do? Pray. Brother and sister, pray to that problem and give to the Lord. And uh, don't worry too much because you're going to waste your time. Worry too much. And when you start worrying, the Bible says, don't worry. But for every form by prayer and a petition, give all to the Lord. But many times you go around Christians, they always worry about the same thing over, 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 over. I have passed that exam already. My wife can tell you that. I don't worry too much anymore. I just pray and I give the rest unto the Lord. So one thing the Pharisees want to know here, the most important uh, commandment. Teacher, which is the most important in the law of Moses? Jesus replied, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. And the second is equally important, to love your neighbor as yourself. The entire law and all the command of the prophet are based in these two commandments. You know, they always try to trip God. After he defeated Sadducees, now the Pharisees bring the lawyers who think that they know better. They're going to trick this man now. They're going to trick him. Jesus knew what they're going to do. And he just tells them, well, the law, everything that is above everything is love. Love your God, not only from your mouth, with all your heart, your soul, and mind, and your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. You see, every, all the Bible has come down to that, that scripture. I know that word, if you memorize this Bible, if you know anything about this Bible in your heart and your soul, and nobody can see that love in you, then you don't get it now. You have a problem and we have to help you. That's all it's about. Love your neighbor as yourself. Today I want you to make a decision in your life. You know, we all need to make a decision every single day. This is a personal thing so nobody's going to tell you you have to do it if you don't do it. No, it's about you, your journey with the Lord. We are in a journey. And we all know that uh, this life is not guaranteed. It's not guaranteed. You never know what's going to happen tomorrow, next week, next month. So it, it, it's imperative for all of us to start thinking godly thinking. If God takes me away today, am I sure I'm going to be in heaven? Am I sure I'm going to be with Christ? If not, you're not sure about that, I think it's the moment to start making decisions in your life. You see, I talked to you about roots and all those things because of determination about uh, her life, how she decided, and she's doing everything about what she needs to do, and God has made way for her. And she prosper in her way. And we have seen also how our Apostle Paul, when in a difficult time, he never stopped preaching the gospel because he you know that gospel will save somebody's life. It's not about us. It's no longer us. It's about people. This is, a, this is a clear thing. It will help you also to help people no matter what. Some people cannot help because they think about themselves first. Before they help, when you start thinking about yourself all the time and not doing anything about, you may not do anything. You may not do anything. And I pray that the God that gave us this name for this church, the mount of the Lord, it shall be provided. I pray the spirit that is behind this world to penetrate our spirit so we can be 
not just a Christian in name, but Christian who like to put things in practice. Because when you do that, people will see the evidence of your Christianity, of who you are, really. We can do all through Christ who strengthens us. And my prayer, God to use us. We have potential in our life, but we don't even know it because we never tap on it. All the, the potential that we have, uh, our destiny is to please the Lord and, and uh, to, to show to the world who we are in Christ. There are so much inside us, but we never use those potential that we have. I pray that God to help us today to reach out to those potential so we can be a blessing to each other, the blessing to our community, and the blessing for the world. May God bless you, and let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning. Holy Father, your word has been spoken. You use it to penetrate people's heart. You use it to bring conviction to people to make the right decision in their life. The rest belong to you. We do what we're supposed to do. So, mighty God, I thank you for the month of the Lord Church. I thank you for friends. I thank you for community. I thank you for your world, most important, who change the life of people. Help us, Lord. We give all the praise. We give all the glory. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. 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 All right, if you are watching and you are in this area, and you have not got any church, or you are not attending any church, we want to invite you to 23 Pound Street at 11 o'clock, we start our service. We would like to see you, see you come earlier, like at 10.30 we have prayer, we want to get to know you, then at 11 o'clock we start the service. May God bless you, and thank you so much for watching. Thank you for all of you. In Jesus Christ's name, amen.